welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. I am Banjo Ben, your host on the website to teach you how to play guitar, banjo, mandolin. This week is Guitar Week, and today is all about waltz rhythm. I had a student of mine write me about this a few weeks ago. I thought it was a great idea, so I'm adding it onto my uh, basic guitar rhythm series there on the website. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about what guitar uh, waltz rhythm is. I'm going to give you four different right hand patterns to use and uh, work you through different um, techniques and drills to get that um, going. Then I'm going to teach you how to walk back and forth between your chords, and I'm going to give you six different licks uh, that you can put on the end of your phrases that make this waltz rhythm sound really good. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook here in a moment, I'll ask you to come over to the website, banjobenclark.com. You can join as a Gold Pick member. You can watch all of my videos including the lesson for this one, which is almost a 30-minute lesson. Um, and then you can download all of my tabs and rhythm track MP3s. This is a, a great lesson. I wish I would have had this when I was trying to learn how to play rhythm guitar. Um, let's jump into it right now. Let's get introduced to some guitar waltz rhythm today. Let me give you a quick overview of what we're going to do. I'm going to explain what waltz uh, timing is, and then I'm going to give you four different pick and patterns. Uh, that you can use as you play this waltz rhythm to vary it up a little bit. Then I'm going to show you how to walk back and forth between your chords uh, in waltz timing. And then I'm going to give you six different ending licks that you can use uh, when you're playing out of the key of G. Things like that that you can use to really accent the end of your phrases. Now whenever we say waltz timing or if a song's a waltz, what do we mean by that? Well, we simply mean that there are three beats in each measure. You know, I'd say the majority of our songs um, are not waltzes. Um, the majority of our songs are in 4-4 four, four timing, mean, meaning that they get four beats per measure. Uh, but there's quite a few songs out there, especially in the bluegrass and the gospel genres, um, that do have waltz timing. If you want a couple examples to those, we've got, let's say, Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. Um, Star Spangled Banner, that's a waltz. Oh, say can you see? One, two, three, one, two. Um, happy birthday is a waltz. Happy birthday to you. Three, one, two, three, one, two. So there's lots of songs out there that are waltzes that you may not even realize. And it takes a, a little different strategy. Uh, to play rhythm to those. So let's just look at a, a very basic pattern just to get our hands working. Uh, this is pattern number one we can throw up there. We're going to base this out of the key of G just because um, it's maybe the most useful at this point. Later on we can expand it. Um, but what we're going to work on is different anchor notes, I'm going to call them, or bass notes, um, and then switching in between chords. So I want you to get your um, G chord, your bluegrass G chord ready. So we've got third fret, second fret, two open strings, and then I cover my third frets with my ring and pinky finger. And actually I don't even play the index finger, I, I leave it off the A string and I mute it with the bottom part of my middle finger so that my chord looks like this. Okay, and so with that first measure of our waltz timing, we're playing three beats. That means the first beat is going to be our bass note. And then we're going to give two beats in chords. Now those second two beats there in measure one, I know that I've got it tabbed out the last three strings, or the first three strings. So it looks like this. Now in reality, I probably hit more strings than, than just those first three for my um, chord strums. I might hit that fourth string as well. Um, but I typically try to aim for these uh, first few strings. Whenever I go down and play that bass note, I'm going to be intentional about playing it. I usually do it with a little bit of thumb action. Whereas my strum is more of the wrist. Okay, the second measure, let's say we have two measures of G. I'm going to change my bass note or my anchor note. I'm going to come up to the D note, the D string, and play it in measure two. And then do the same strum. So that my typical waltz rhythm, if I'm hanging on a G chord, would be these two measures back to back. It would sound like this. Okay. 
So that's a really good place to start. There's no frills. It's just, we've got our waltz rhythm going. We want to accentuate those first notes. Okay, so that we know what drives it. Now, whenever I go into my C pattern, C chord, I'm gonna make my regular C chord. Third fret, second fret, open, first fret, open. Okay, and so the same thing here, I'm going to start by playing that C bass note, two strums, and then I'm going to use my ring finger, I'm going to alternate it down to the third fret of the lowest string, slow E string, and grab it. That's a G note down there, so that whenever I play these two together, it sounds like this. Now a lot of people, won't alternate that ring finger, they'll just play the ring finger on the lowest string and use their pinky to go on the third fret of the A string. That's fine, Tony Rice does that. So that you don't have to worry about going back and forth and the, those bass notes resonate. But I find that I like it better to alternate. Okay, so this is just a very basic pattern. We're going to build on these. As we look at our D chord in measure five, let's make our D chord. We're just going to be playing primarily on this first four strings. We've got an open D string, second fret, third fret, second fret. So my bass note, my first anchor or bass note is gonna be this open D string. And I'm gonna strum through, and then I'm gonna come down and grab my open A string and strum. So it sounds like this. Have trouble hitting those bass notes and that's okay it just takes practice and I still miss them every now and then I'm sure I will before the lesson's over but that's why it's important to be intentional whenever you hit these bass notes be intentional and play them strong and you can watch it at first you know watch your right hand or your pick hand as you're playing but the more you play this the more you want to stay away from watching it and, and you'll just get a feel for it and sometimes I'll let my fingers just kind of lightly touch the top of the guitar just to give me a little reference about where I'm at. Now I'm also going to show you what I would do in an E minor situation. So this is measure seven. We'll go to our basic E minor chord, which is just the second frets on the fourth and fifth strings. And so my first anchor note is going to be this low E note. And then I'm going to strum through it and then come up to the fifth string and strum. So this is just basic waltz rhythm. So if we were to go back and play two measures of G, two measures of C, two measures of D, two measures of E minor, it would sound and look like this. There's nothing wrong with playing those that basic pattern one two three one two three but we get a little bit monotonous we're, we we need to add a little bit and so we're going to add it stage by stage here some up strokes and then also some licks okay let's check that out now